some of your open-toed socks. Uh-huh. Brad? Hmm? Uh? Talk to me. Okay. Brad, if you have a problem, why don't you talk it over with your wife like other men do? All right. Now, the uh, crux of this case revolves around a very knotty problem in jurisprudence. Now, according to the federal statutes, it indicates the court must fine for the plaintiff. Uh, what do you think, dear? Well, back to my darning. <laughs> All right, honey. <laughs> you stick to your darning, and I'll stick to the legal problem. <laughs> I'll get it. Hi. Hello. You must be Mrs. Stevens. I'm Amy Smith from down the street. Oh, hello, Amy. I thought I might find my mother here. No, dear. She went home over an hour ago. Oh. Well, I'll see her when I get home later. Nice to have met you, Mrs. Stevens. Someday, I'd like to meet Judge Stevens. Well, who do you think this is? The upstairs maid? <laughs> <laughs> you mean... Yes. You may not recognize him without his black robe, but that's Judge Stevens, all right. Well, Amy, don't you think I look like a typical judge? No, not really. Well, what do you think a judge should look like? Well, uh, you know, uh, severe and stern. Severe and stern. Sounds like a delicatessen I used to know. Well, what I mean is, you look too young to be a judge. <laughs> young? Well, Joni, did you uh, hear that? Too young. <laughs> well, I'm not surprised at all that Amy thinks you look too young to be a judge, because after all, people who know me, <laughs> that is, he's my husband, you know, and, well, uh, wouldn't you say that I look too young to be a judge's wife? <laughs> oh, yes, <laughs> yes. Well, I'd better be going. All right, dear. I'll show you to the door. Goodbye, Judge Stevens. And I'm sorry I seem so dumb. Good night, Mrs. Stevens. Good night, Amy. <laughs> you know, Brad, I just thought of something. Uh, what's that? Well, if Amy thinks you look too young to be a judge, there must be a lot of other people that think you look too young, too. But I am a judge, Joan, and, and that's what counts. Yes, but if people don't think you look like a judge... Well, what could they do about it? Refuse to go to jail if I send them? <laughs> well, you even said the other day yourself that you couldn't understand why you could never get the nomination for Superior Court Justice. But I know why. You look too young. Oh, Joan, don't be re... You, uh, you think so? Sure, you look like a kid. <laughs> oh, don't be silly, Joan. We've got to find some way to make you look older. Now, look, Joan, every time you get one of your ideas, I age overnight. I got it. You'll grow a mustache. Oh, no, I won't. Well, Brad, it's for your career. Joan, people vote for the man, not the mustache. Well, they go together. You show me a mustache, and nine times out of ten, I'll show you a man behind it. Believe oh. <laughs> me, Brad, I think you owe it to yourself. Joanie... Maybe you got something at that. There uh, couldn't be any other reason that I haven't gotten a nomination. Okay, honey. I'll try it. Oh, yeah. Joni, I'm home. Oh, hello, lover. Hello, darling. Oh, I swear, you get better looking every day. Must be the mustache. Oh, I don't know. I was a handsome devil before I grew it. <laughs> uh, what are we going to have for dinner? Veal chops. Oh, good. Right after dinner, I want to go to bed. I'm, I'm tired. Well, no wonder. You just tossed and turned all last night. Well, I'll take care of that. I'm going to take one of those pills that Dr. Kirk gave me. Good. <laughs> well, 
kidding, Brad. A mustache can do an awful lot to a man. <laughs> well, I better see about those chops. What was new and exciting today, dear? Oh, nothing. Just a couple of dull real estate cases. Oh, yes. Yeah, yes, I ran into Henrietta Johnson outside of uh, City Hall. Oh, that was nice. How does she look? Oh, fine, fine. And she just couldn't get over how distinguished I look with my mustache. Uh, how did she put it? Oh, yes, it, it, uh, it does something for me. Well, it does. Uh, oh, I had uh, lunch at the Dover today, and, and guess what happened? What? Well, Jill Turner came over to my table just to say how, how well I looked. Oh, she did? Yeah, she came clear across the crowded room just to say hello. She almost knocked a waiter off his feet. I guess she didn't notice him. He probably didn't have a mustache. <laughs> Did you run into any other old friends today? No, no. Oh, I uh, ran into Susan Bentley. I was walking along the street, and she was on the other side, and she came right over. Tell you how handsome and distinguished you look with your new mustache. Yeah, that's right. You know, there must be something to it. She came right through the traffic. <laughs> I know her. And if Jill Turner can knock over a waiter, Sue Bentley can knock over a bus. <laughs> Joni! Joni, don't tell me you're jealous. Me? Brad, you ought to know I haven't got a jealous bone in my body. Me jealous? Oh. Well, you don't sound very convincing. I don't? Me jealous? Ha ha! <laughs> Brad. What, Deb? I've been thinking. Yeah? I like it better without a mustache. <laughs> you do? Yes, honey. That's the way you looked when I fell in love with you, and I guess that's the way I'll always like you best. But, Joan, you... So how about shaving that ugly old thing off? <laughs> oh, look, Joan. Oh, I don't mean right away, darling. You can do it any time before dinner. So, will you, huh? Huh? Will you shave it off, darling? Well, no, no, honey, of course not. I'll admit I didn't like it at first, but now I'm used to it and I like it. I, I, I think it's attractive. Me too, but I don't like what it's attractive. What? <laughs> it's my own fault. I created a Frankenstein. Joan, is uh, dinner ready? Yes, monster. Master. <laughs> Here's some hot milk to take with your pill, dear. Oh, fine. So that'll make me sleep fine. I hope so, dear. There you are. Me and my big ideas. That Henrietta Johnson's got a lot of nerve telling my husband he's handsome. <laughs> Turner. She wants to tell somebody he's handsome. Why does she tell her own husband? Yeah. She's so crazy about a mustache, why doesn't she grow one herself? <laughs> I think of it, I believe she has. <laughs> and that's Sue Bentley. I can just imagine how she must have gushed. Oh, Brad, darling. How simply devastating you look. So chic, so dashing, and so distinguished. If they ever catch you. Yeah. <laughs> I'm nervous I'm telling my husband he's handsome. Oh, I can't blame him, though. He is handsome. <laughs> Those girls steal my husband. Not over a silly mustache.
dear. Wake up, darling. Hello. Good morning. Hello. Oh, honey, have I got a surprise for you. Oh, surprise. Oh, yeah, I got a surprise I meant to tell you. <laughs> you got a surprise for me? Yeah, well, it was your idea that if I grew a mustache, I might get nomination for Superior Court Judge. And you were right. Guess what? Ed Rushmore called, and he and Johnny Fitzgerald are coming by the house tonight huh, to talk to me. <laughs> Honey, you don't seem very happy about it. Oh, but I am. I am. Yes, I guess it was his mustache that did the, did the trick. Oh, well, no wonder, Fred. Darling, it looks just wonderful on you. <laughs> I don't want to seem conceited, but uh, don't you think I bear a striking resemblance to uh, Clark Gable? Yeah, when he was a boy. Oh, I guess you can't get used to the new me. Matter of fact, I can't get used to it myself. <laughs> now, darling, you just cover up there. Oh. I don't want you to catch cold. <laughs> You're a very important man now. Uh, Joni, what, what did you want to tell me? Uh-huh. Uh, yeah, what did you wake me up for? Oh, that. Oh, that. Well, I just wanted to tell you, dear, that it's Saturday morning and you've got one extra hour to sleep. Oh. <laughs> Oh, I'm so glad that you found what you wanted. That'll be five dollars. Five dollars? For just one little mustache? Lady, that's our price. Well, I guess this is no time to split hairs. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, by the way, here's a tube of adhesive. This is the stuff that makes it stick. Oh, I forgot about that. Are you sure the stuff will really hold? Like iron. Once you spread this adhesive on, the only thing that'll take that mustache off is hot water. Hot water? <laughs> well, thank you very much. Madam, would you like me to wrap it, or would you rather wear it home? <laughs> oh! <laughs> to get up, dear. Oh, boy. What an extra hour of sleep can do for you, you know? Oh. Say, Joni, look how much it grew last night alone. Well, it just shows you what a full eight hours sleep can do for you, dear. Oh, honey, this is gonna be our big night. Imagine those fellows from the nominating committee coming to our home, and it was your idea. Boy, I really gotta hand it to you. Believe me, it's possible. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> well, I can't tell you how happy I am you're going to nominate my husband for Superior Court Judge. Well, we've had this idea under consideration for some time now. <laughs> Thank you. Well, I must say, I think you made a wonderful choice. He has every qualification for the job. He's fearless, reliable. Joni. He's honest and intelligent. <laughs> Joni, you'll break the table. And if nominated, he'll break your table. <laughs> <laughs> oh, excuse me. You know, I got so carried away. I'm one of Brad's biggest fans. Now, am I, Mrs. Stevens? She's right, Ed. There isn't a better man for the job, and I'm inclined to agree. I've followed Brad's career since it started, and I've always admired his adult approach and mature judgment. <laughs> <laughs> He's so distinguished looking. I know he'd definitely get the women's vote. <laughs> well, then it's settled, Brad. We're going to run you for Superior Court Judge. Just think of it, Brad. Superior Court Judge. Next, maybe Congressman. And then Governor. And after that, the White House. The White House? I'll have to start wearing bangs. <laughs> well, uh, gentlemen, I want to thank you for awarding me the nomination. And I shall do everything in my power to live up to your expectations. Now that the official business is over, Joni, will you serve tea, please? Oh, of course, dear. And while I'm getting things ready, just keep everything jolly. I will. <laughs> oh, Judge Stevens, your wife is charming. You've had a splendid career, Brad, and we all like you very much. Well, I hope it's only the beginning. <laughs> uh, well, dear, 
Haven't you forgotten someone? No, dear, I don't think I really care for any tea. <laughs> oh, excuse me. We had a spot of tea the other day, and I forgot to remove the spot, I guess. I... <laughs> no, honey, not the table. I haven't got a cup, honey. There's an extra one up there. Ah, there it is. <laughs> there. Yeah. Use our candidate, Brad. We're bound to attract many more voters. And with the respect you have in this district, there shouldn't be any big problems. I, I... Oh, excuse me, won't you just... Uh, yeah, yeah. Sure. Right, go ahead. Go on, then. <laughs> I'm afraid you can't have any tea, dear. I got my finger stuck in the, in the teapot. Well, how did you get your finger caught in the spout? Well, I forgot myself. I thought I was bowling. Oh, honey. I've been the rest of my life going wrong with the tea. I'll never get it out. <clears throat> well, honestly, honey, now listen, will you please serve the guests? I'm embarrassed. <laughs> well, you know, she's... <laughs> she will uh, think out that this happens and... Yeah, I'm sorry. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Wonderful idea. As long as we're having tea, how about iced tea? Iced tea? I see. Two iced teas coming up. Oh, Joni, Joni, honey, please, will you just uh, pour the tea, please? She's. <laughs> well, you want it, eh? Right? Well, there we are. Uh, well, uh, my dear, you haven't a thing to worry about. Your husband will win every feminine vote in the district. My wife's right. With your husband as the candidate, the election's going to be a cinch. Then maybe for once we can find ourselves out of hot water. <laughs> yes. It's already stirring. Uh, you have to get together pretty soon, Brad, and lay out our campaign. Yes, I want to uh, talk about that. I, I really feel oh. that we should. Uh, Thank uh, you so much. Uh, Joan, Joan. Mord? No, honey. Uh, Joan. <laughs> Say we meet one day early next week, have lunch together, and settle this. Hold thing. it, Eric! How should I do a thing like that? I forgot to serve straws. <laughs> oh, straws? You drink hot tea through a straw? Oh, yes, it uh, helps to hold the lemon down. Awfully good for you. Oh, Joni, now stop this nonsense. Come on, let us uh, drink our tea, shall we? Yeah. Uh, you know, friends, I think we should, every one of us, be very happy. We've finally gotten. The kind of candidate that we like. Yes, it's taken us a long time, but at least we've got the man we like. Yeah. Brad, I forgot to congratulate you on your nomination, dear. Oh, there you are. <laughs> Say she was never this affectionate until I grew this mustache. <laughs> I don't know where the time went. Say, we've got to be running. Come along, kitten. Well, I'm certainly happy that you all are. Well, thank you for the wonderful evening. You must come again sometime. Well, thank you. We'll give you a buzz early next week, Brad. Uh, do that, Ed, will you? <laughs> oh, uh, by the way, Brad, do me a favor, will you? Uh, sure. Shave off that silly looking mustache. It's liable to cost us a lot of votes. <laughs> I think it was a very successful evening, dear. I hope we made a good impression. Uh, uh Joni. Yes, dear. About my mustache. What about your mustache? Well, I'm gonna take it off. Ed Rushmore said it would cost me a lot of votes, so I've decided to shave it off. <laughs> would you mind repeating that? No, honey, I said I'm gonna shave my mustache off. Do you mind? Oh, no. No, I don't mind. In fact, I think it's a wonderful idea. <laughs> Shave it off. <laughs> All right, honey, I'll, I'll do it right now. Wait a minute. Wait a minute, Brad. It's um, very late, you know, and, and why bother shaving before going to bedtime? But, well, you'll uh, only have to shave again in the morning, dear. But uh, I'll tell you what now. Uh, you're very tired, and you need a very good night's sleep, so... Uh, why don't you take one of those pills that Dr. Kurt gave you again? Oh, no, honey, I'll sleep fine. As long as I'm going to shave it off, I might as well do it right now. Brad, I want to have a little talk with you, then. <laughs> you see, uh, you're a very important man now. 
a candidate for superior court judge. <laughs> well, you can't shave yourself. What nonsense. I know a Supreme Court justice who shaves himself. Oh, but you're going to be a governor. A uh, congressman. Who can tell how far you might go? And for a man who's practically in the White House, <laughs> you have no business shaving yourself. Well, it's, uh... Take that right away, dear. I know, Joni, but are, are you sure you can do it? Why, honey, I can shave you in your sleep. My sleep. <laughs> now, just stay right there, dear, and I'll get everything. Oh, this is absolute. I'm not going to... Here we are, dear. I'll have this fixed up in no time. Now, I'll bet that Supreme Court judge that you know doesn't have a wife like me. <laughs> there we are. There. Uh, hmm. Huh? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh, next, please. Oh, <laughs> Johnny. Hey, you're, you're a wonderful barber. This is the closest shave I've ever had. You and me both. Oh, you look so pretty now. <laughs> <No>. Love her. <laughs> Thank mm -hmm. you.